Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. Yes, well, I went to Washington, D.C. this summer to see our son. And he asked us if we would like to go to a funeral at Arlington Cemetery. He said he was going to be a part of a burial for a Washington National Guard soldier who was killed in action and was going to be buried with full military honors. We said, sure, we went. It was so moving, I just can't explain how we felt there. We got there early. The family was brought into the chapel at Fort Myers, which is attached to Arlington. They were presented a Purple Heart. They were presented several documents. My son gave them a certificate from the Washington National Guard, and he is the uh, ranking officer in the Washington Guard stationed in D.C. at this time, and that's why he was there. After, after the presentations, a, the, a caisson, horse-drawn, pulls up in front of the chapel, an honor guard unloaded the casket, draped it with the flag. All this time, the U.S. Army Band was playing. They carried the casket into the, into the chapel. The Army chaplain did a service. Then they reversed it. They carried him out, put, put the casket on the horse-drawn caisson, took it all the way into Arlington Cemetery. We followed, listening to the band all the way. Then, at the gravesite, they did a 21-gun salute, a bagpiper played Amazing Grace, and the people in the service just sort of dissolved off into different parts of Arlington Cemetery, and they were going to repeat this three or four more times that day. That's how fast our veterans are dying. Now, this is a Washington National Guard soldier that was killed in action. How come we didn't hear about it? The reason is Corporal Akers was killed in 1944. He was in Hürken, Germany, the Battle of Hürken Forest. He landed with the 803rd Tank Destroyer Battalion of the Washington National Guard. Seven days after D-Day, they joined the push to push the Germans out of the Low Countries and France. The Germans fought back at Hürken Forest, and his tank destroyer, which is nothing but a tank with a great big gun, used obviously for other tanks, it was hit by enemy fire. Three of the five crew members got out. Corporal Akers and Sergeant Melvin Anderson did not. They were burned beyond recognition. They didn't know who was who. So this is what the Army did back in World War II. They took unknown soldiers and buried them in a field in France, in a cemetery rather. They laid there for 75 years, three quarters of a century, but they were not forgotten. The military has a man mantra that says no soldier left behind, and this is important to soldiers and airmen and sailors, that they know that at least their remains will be returned to their family. So for three quarters of a century, they laid there. Finally, DNA technology enabled them to identify some of these people. When it come, came Corporal Aker's turn, they were able to find a niece, his only living relative, actually, who provided enough DNA that they could positively identify him. They asked the family, all of which, all of whom were from the West Virginia area, would you like to have a full military funeral for your loved one. Yes, and they came and they were so impressed with what was done for their long past ancestor. It was amazing. It was one of the most moving experiences I could imagine. And if you wanna see a further example of how seriously the military takes this, see the movie 
taking chance with Kevin Bacon. He is a Marine who is charged with taking a Marine named Chance back to his home in Idaho. Madam Toastmaster.